Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the Constitution and the Civil War Amendments. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the United States Constitution and the three amendments that ended slavery, uh, gave Africans uh, citizenship, and eventually the uh, right to vote, uh, Dr. Julian Blackshear. And of course, Dr. Blackshear, let me welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Thank you. And also note that uh, when I talked about uh, the 13th, 14th, and the 15th Amendments, that uh, you've got a lot of information to add to that that in a real sense might contradict. Uh, some of the things that we've said in reference to that amendment. Well, I don't, I'm not so sure it will contradict or supplement. How you supplement, that? very good, mm -hmm. and we certainly appreciate having you mm -hmm. here. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Blackshear, you've been with us on a number of occasions, yeah, yeah. and each time you uh, give us such excellent information. Let's mm -hmm. uh, start off by having you to give us sort of a, a, a short sketch <coughs> in terms of the things that uh, eventually brought you to us this morning your background, your education, and some of the things that were important, and then we'll talk, talk well, about the Constitution and the uh, 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. You asking for my background? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Julian Blackshear, um, graduated from Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia in 1963, mm -hmm. uh, after having uh, graduated from uh, high school in Chattanooga, Tennessee in mm -hmm. 1959. Uh, thereafter, I graduated from University of Tennessee College of Law and uh, right now they have a scholarship in my name at yeah. uh, the University of Tennessee College of Law and um, I'm grateful for that. Uh, I practiced law in the private practice in Nashville, Tennessee for 36 years. I was previously a corporate attorney for the Legal Defense Fund in ACP for four and a half years. I'm now assistant professor in political science at Tennessee State University, uh, primarily concerned with uh, uh, the pre-law curriculum there. And now I'm here on your show. Very good. And of course, uh, Dr. Black here, we had you a uh, number of years ago uh, talking about the Constitution of the United States. And uh, what I'd like to do is to uh, have you to uh, talk about uh, the uh, United States Constitution and, and the relationship to, of the Constitution to the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. And we can start that right now. In order to understand the 13th Amendment, you got to first uh, understand the criteria for freemen in English-speaking societies. In common law in England, the criteria for freemen was the ability to enter into contracts uh, with other people, negotiate your best bargain without unreasonable governmental interference. Slaves did not have that ability. Only free people had that right. And that right is so precious, it's in the Constitution right now, when it was originally drafted. Uh, the impairment of obligations of contract clause, where it, it rises to the constitutional dignity that governments cannot unreasonably interfere with the right of people to enter into contracts with each other. So when the 13th Amendment abolished mm -hmm. slavery Good. with the intent of making black people free, it had to abolish all the incidents and badges of slavery as well. In other words, the characteristics of slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One characteristic of slavery is that they could not make and enforce and, and negotiate contracts. Mm -hmm. So now we got Title 42, United States Code, Section mm -hmm. 1981, it says, black people have the same right to make and enforce contracts on the same terms and conditions as heretofore available to white mm -hmm. people. Now that is what makes them free. Mm -hmm. So when you got private businesses that think that they have escaped the mm -hmm. mandate of integration by not having any public involvement in their activities, mm -hmm. but once they prevent black people from making and enforcing and negotiating contracts by coming into their businesses or submitting their children for applications, mm -hmm. uh, integrate the private mm -hmm. academies and so forth, mm -hmm. then the 13th Amendment of black people would have been violated, mm -hmm. specifically Title 42 United States Code Section mm -hmm. 1981. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do is contractual in nature. You can't think of any activity in this country that does not involve the ability to make and enforce contracts mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. So when one applies for admission mm -hmm. of the children to an all-white private academy, mm -hmm. they are asking, they are trying to mm -hmm. enter into a contractual relationship. To be denied that contractual relationship is being denied mm -hmm. or the element of being a free person and, and the 13th Amendment ab mm -hmm. abolished and that. And violating their... Uh, uh, 13th Amendment rights. Is, is that well, you can say it that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Very good. And, and of course, uh, we uh, have about uh, 40 seconds, uh, sure. Dr. Blackshear, before the uh, end of this segment. And uh -huh. then we'll come back and we'll uh, 
have you to further elaborate upon the 13th Amendment and perhaps then move into the 14th right. Amendment to the Constitution yeah. and the 15th Amendment and perhaps uh, compare or whatever uh, the two uh, or the yeah. three ideas. But uh, essentially, this is exactly what we wanted. We wanted to go beyond this idea of uh, the 13th Amendment uh, uh, given freedom, but we wanted some additional well, information. Well, well, it gave you freedom, but mm -hmm. you got to understand what constitutes freedom. freedom. Mm -hmm. Freedom is more than removing you from your shackles. Very good. And of course, let, let, let's take this first commercial break, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. The topic is the